Welcome to the Northern Railroad. Today's train, the third in our 2018 series of fall foliage passenger excursions, will take us from Reading Outer Station to Jim Thorpe, a distance of 60 miles. Before we begin our journey to Jim Thorpe, I have a few important safety announcements. Number one, smoking, including but not limited to electronic cigarettes and consumption of alcoholic beverages are not permitted aboard our coaches or anywhere on railroad property. Second, for your own safety, please keep your head and hands inside the coach at all times. And finally, there is a restroom available in each coach for your convenience. Our operating crew on the train today consists of our steam engineer, Shane Fredrickson, assisted by fireman Chris Post and Ryan Fredrickson. The diesel engineer is Michael Cole, and our conductor is Timothy Hafner. Now in its 91st year of existence, Steam Locomotive number 425 is back once again for our 2018 passenger season. This beautiful locomotive was originally constructed in January of 1928 at the Baldwin Locomotive Works in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania for the Gulf, Mobile, and Northern Railroad. The Reading and Northern Railroad purchased 425 in 1984 for passenger excursion service. Locomotive and tender together weigh over 200 tons. It has a coal capacity of 18 tons and a water capacity of 8,500 gallons. Its drive wheels are 69 inches in diameter. Today, it is sporting a Reading Company six-chime whistle. Assisting the 425 today is Reading and Northern engine number 3052, a model SD40-2 diesel-electric locomotive that generates 3,000 horsepower. Our red standard passenger coaches were built between 1917 and 1920 for the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western Railroad as self-propelled commuter cars. They went on to serve New Jersey Transit and were purchased by Reading and Northern in 1984 for excursion service. Each one is 70 feet long, weighs 54 and a half tons, and comfortably seats 72 people. The rest of our consist today includes the head and power car number 1250, our full length dome car number 4, the Lehigh Gorge, our parlor car number 3, and finally our private heavyweight observation car number 1, the Black Diamond. The Reading and Northern Railroad is now in its second year of passenger train operations at Outer Station. As many of you know, the name Outer Station is a nod to the former Reading Company passenger hub that was once located mere minutes away on North 6th Street in downtown Reading. Our new version of Outer Station is situated at the very southern tip of the Reading and Northern Railroad. Notice the handsome interlocking tower-style building that stands sentinel over the tracks and the antique wooden water tank. But that's just the beginning. Much more is planned over the coming months to add to this old-time railroad scene. As we get set to depart Outer Station, your car attendants will be passing through the train to punch and collect your tickets, so please have them ready. They're also here to ensure your comfort and safety aboard the train. Please be sure to retain your ticket stubs, as you will be required to present them to your car attendant prior to boarding the return trip at Jim Thorpe. There are three other passenger trains operating to or from Jim Thorpe today, and it is very important that we ensure that everyone is on the right train at the right time. You will have a chance to ride one of those other trains if you wish, but we'll talk about that later. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask your car attendant. For right now, sit back and enjoy the show as we travel through some of the most beautiful and diverse scenery in the United States. Keep your arms and hands inside the coach because we're going up and there's close clearances because we got real co uh, freight cars sitting on either side of this train. And they're, they're yeah. close. Have <laughs> your tickets ready. Put your head out and move it. I'm not going to I'm trying to film. Yeah. <laughs> Leaving our 
station, when passed through the railroad's north running yard. A great deal of freight is gathered here and assembled into trains to serve customers as far north as Hazleton and Scranton. Yeah. Yeah. over Pennsylvania Route 61, the first of four encounters we will have with the busy highway. Corporation of America on our right, two important customers of the railroad. We sail under busy U.S. Route 222, formerly known as the Road to Nowhere, and cross the main branch of the Swivel River on the picturesque Peacock Slot Viaduct. This unique span was designed and completed by Gustavus Nichols for the Philadelphia and Reading Railroad in 1856. It is known as a first Spandrel Bridge due to the fact that there are actually large circular openings between each arch and the bridge deck. It is believed to be the only bridge of this type in America and is named for a nearby lock on the long defunct Slipper Canal. Port Clinton, we will 
loosely trace the western bank of the main branch of the Struble River. The main branch of the Struble River is 135 miles long and empties into the Delaware River at the site of the former Philadelphia Navy Yard. The name Struble was coined by Dutch settlers and means Hidden River and refers to its confluence with the Delaware River. found in the small village of Cross Keys.
of the photographers as it is situated at the extreme north end during the longest stretch of the straight and level track of the entire railroad. If you were to stand at ground level here, you could literally see the train coming northbound for miles.
Coffee come upon the small community of Mooresville. Just across the street of the road.
Springs once more. The Springs is extremely busy in State 78, and the bridge and dust will drop. <laughs>
under Route 61 yet again as we approach Port Clinton. We will be stopping at Port Clinton very shortly to board more passengers. As we will pause only long enough to board those passengers, we ask that no one get off the train during this stop with the exception of designated train crew members. Thank <laughs> you. 